Hello again, my name is Ben Canning and this is a micro lecture on Newton's third law. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and to do your follow-up questions on Google Forms. Okay, so before we get into the third law, let's think about a scenario for a second. A skateboarder is standing still, and then they push on a wall. What happens to the skateboarder? Take a second to think about it. All right, well, hopefully you realize that as the skateboarder pushes on the wall, the skateboarder will begin to move. Well, this means that if the skateboarder went from not moving to moving, there must have been a force that was applied to our skateboarder, um, mainly because they accelerated and went from zero speed to having some speed, which shows a change in speed or an acceleration in this case. Well, this is a perfect example of a reaction force, um, namely that something was pushing against our skateboarder, which brings us to Newton's third law. And don't worry about copying this version down. Uh, I'll simplify it in a second. So Newton's third law states that when one body exerts a force on a second body, the second body simultaneously exerts a force of equal magnitude and opposite direction on that of the first body. Um, so that means basically that anything that applies a force, like Yoshi here, applying a force to the block, receives a force in reaction uh, that is equal in size but opposite in direction. So if Yoshi pushes on the block, the block pushes on Yoshi. Another way to say it is anytime something applies a force, it receives an equal force. And these are the action and reaction forces. All right, so let's get some practice on this. Let's say the action force in this case is the book pushes down on the table. So we've got the book here, we've got an arrow for the force, and we've got a kind of subscript here to show what direction and what's happening or what this force is. In this case, book pushing on table. Go ahead and think about it for a second. What's the reaction force? All right, hopefully you got it. But, uh, well, in this case, the reaction force would be the table pushes up on the book. Opposite direction, same size. And this is actually the normal force. Sometimes it's called the reaction force or normal reaction force. Uh, but the normal force in this case is actually the reaction from the table. Uh, and that's kind of where it comes from. All right, let's think about another scenario. A man pushes against the wall. What is the reaction in this case? All right, hopefully you got that the reaction force would be if the man pushes on the wall, then the wall pushes on the man in this case, and that is the reaction force. Now, notice that the two forces are on two different things, and this is why they don't cancel out. So one force is on the wall right here, and the other force is on the man. This is why in pushing something, you don't have an action and reaction that cancel each other out, because they're on two different things, um, and that's why they don't cancel. All right, let's think about another scenario. I've already filled in the action reaction. We've got the action as the skateboarder pushes on a rock, much like our first scenario, and therefore the rock pushes on our skateboarder. So we've got a force, and both of them are the same size force, opposite directions, and on two different objects. Why is it then that the rock uh, doesn't move, but the skateboarder does? Think about it for a second, see if you can figure it out. All right, well, even though it's the same size force, what happens is we've got a rock that has a huge mass and we've got a skateboarder that has a relatively small mass. So for the same force, there's going to be a much larger acceleration for our skateboarder than for the same force on the rock. It would result in a much smaller acceleration because the mass is so much bigger. Um, this is often why you may not notice reaction forces uh, in many different cases. There's also the idea that the rock doesn't move because there's some friction on the rock, whereas the person is on uh, wheels in this case. If you were, this person were standing still, there'd be enough friction, they probably wouldn't move in this sense. So this is one reason why we often don't notice reaction forces. Three or more bullet points worth of notes, one to two sentence summary, and please do your follow-up questions on Google Forms.